Yeah. So interesting. Okay. Let's talk about sort of foundationalism then. So a sort of term that you coined, um, a phenomenal conservatism. Um, you define it as a version of foundationalism, stating that, quote, phenomenal conservatism holds that appearances, mental states, wherein something seems to you to be the case, are the source of foundational justification, end quote. So can you explore how this differs from other foundationalist perspectives and yeah. also how it answers skepticism? Yeah. So, you know, the answer to skepticism is pretty straightforward, right? So, I mean, my view is um, the, the rational way of thinking is uh, starting by assuming that everything is the way it seems. We just start there. Okay. And I'm not saying that necessarily everything is the way it seems. I'm saying that's the starting point. Okay. We don't start by assuming everything is like some radical deception. Okay. And then if you acquire reasons for doubting that things are the way they seem, then you start to revise your beliefs, but you don't revise them for no reason. Okay. And furthermore, I claim that this is implicit in how everybody actually forms their beliefs anyway. So, you know, like, um, this, the skeptics are basically inconsistent people. They're people who sometimes form their beliefs in the rational way, but then other times don't, or like they accept some appearances, but then for no particular reason, they don't accept others. Right. So, okay. So like, you know, the skeptic gives this argument and like, why are you supposed to accept the argument? You're supposed to accept the argument because the premises seem plausible or something. And, and if you didn't have that, then, you know, they would just be like, it, it would just be like making random assertions, right? Like, you know, why, why would I, why would I care that this person is making a bunch of assertions that don't seem correct? And like, why would that even count as a legitimate argument that needed a response? So, okay. Um, but anyway, oh yeah. So what's the response to the skeptics? Like, well, okay. So it's, it seems like I'm living in the real world. I don't seem to be a brain in a vat. If you want to suggest that I might be a brain in a vat, you need to give me reasons why that would be likely. Right. But of course there aren't any, of course there are no reasons why it's likely that you're a brain in a vat. Right. And I'm not saying that they have to prove that I'm a brain in a vat. Right. I'm not even saying that, you know, they don't even have to claim that I am, but they've got to give a reason why it would be plausible or it would be likely that it would be a brain of that. I and mean, there is no reason, right? <laughs> okay. Now it's, it's in principle possible, but you know, you could have an experience where like, you know, suddenly the world goes blank and then you see this text that appears <laughs> that says, oh, you're a brain of that, <laughs> you know, sorry, we've had a problem with the simulation. We're going to have to reboot it, <laughs> you know, and then and everything goes black for a while. And then, you know, the world reboots. Okay. So you could have evidence that your brain of that, but just, there isn't any, that has not happened to anyone. Right. So, okay. Um, oh, what are the alternatives to phenomenal conservatism? Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, in the history of philosophy, most people who thought about the subject were foundationalists. There's, they thought that you have some knowledge that you're allowed to start with that you don't have to give reasons for. And then everything else had to be based on that. So we call we call those the foundations and everything else has to be built up from the foundations by cogent inferences. Um, so, okay. So alternative versions of foundationalism, uh, there's the acquaintance theory defended famously by Bertrand Russell, which held that um, there's some things that you're just directly aware of, right? Acquainted with. And um, so your foundational beliefs are kind of like the simple, obvious beliefs about the things that you're acquainted with. Now, um, how is that different from the phenomenal conservative view? So my view is um, the foundational knowledge comes from appearances. So how are appearances different from acquaintance? Like one thing is um, acquaintance entails the existence of the object. So you can't be acquainted with X unless X is actually there. And appearance doesn't. So you can have an appearance of a pink rat and there doesn't have to be a pink rat there. Okay. <laughs> um, but you can't be acquainted with a pink rat if there isn't a pink rat there. <laughs> okay. Um, and, um, you know, what, what I think is better about the appearance theory is, um, well, one, for one thing, it better corresponds to how we form beliefs. So I claim we don't form beliefs based upon acquaintance. We form beliefs based upon appearance. In most cases, those go together. Most of the time when you have an appearance, it's satisfied by a real thing that's really connected that explains why you have the appearance. And then, so you're, you're also directly aware of the thing. Um, Okay. But in the possible case where you're not acquainted, like you're hallucinating, you still form the belief 
And that shows that the real explanation for your belief is the appearances. Right. And so my claim is that means that if we want to explain why our beliefs are actually justified, you have to say that appearances are a source of justification and not merely acquaintance. Uh, let's see, what are other, other versions of foundationalism? They're like the externalists. Okay. So there are people who say that a, a belief is foundationally justified, provided that the method of forming the belief is actually reliable. And note that the view is not that it's justified as long as you're justified in thinking that the belief forming method is reliable. The theory is you're justified as long as the belief forming method is in fact reliable, whether or not you know that it's reliable. <laughs> okay. All right. So, and, um, right. So sensory perception is in fact reliable. So we have foundational knowledge from the senses, right? And what I don't like about this is, yeah, I don't like externalism. I think that the thing that explains why you're justified has to be something that's internal to you. All right, so if there are two people who are intrinsically identical, forming beliefs in ways that um, from the inside are exactly the same, then they have to either both be justified or both be unjustified. And why? Well, I don't know. I, you know, I think like, you know, part, partly the point of justification is to give people advice about how they should form beliefs. And it's not helpful to give people advice about how to form beliefs where that advice turns on some things that are external to them, right, that they wouldn't have access to. So, okay. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe that's enough. Yeah, no, I think that's really helpful. It gives a good sketch uh, kind of between the two different definitions uh, or the two different views, skepticism and foundationalism, uh, or where they, they both get quite nuanced quite quickly. But I think that's helpful for the listener and viewer and myself just to kind of have a recap as well. So, um, yeah, I appreciate it. <music>